Hiya, my name's David, I'm the Wandering Ponderer. I'm back at St Peter's Church, which is here, and I'm investigating the bombs that dropped on Coggershaw. I popped down to uh, Norman's sweet shop in the town where I purchased a couple of books from a local author and historian Trevor Deasley. Now my last video I, I actually um, quoted some text from Trevor Deasley which is on his website and I put all the relevant links but he covers an awful lot of Coggeshall history and his books are full to the brim with amazing little things. So I decided to get these books and have a look because what I wanted to know more about the church and I've covered the church on numerous occasions but I did discover a bomb that fell in Coggeshall, not the one that I'm going to cover here, World War II, but a bomb that fell in Coggeshall during World War I. Well, here I am in the park. And back in 1914, this was just a meadow. And it was in this location, somewhere around here, um, that a bomb fell from a biplane at night and there's a photo that Trevor Deasley's got in um, or two of his books and I'll put put an image up now not a big um, crater because in World War I, the bombs they used to drop out of biplanes obviously had to be done by somebody in the cockpit leaning over and dropping the bomb by hand. So it couldn't be very big. But the damage could be lethal because the bombs were filled with shrapnel. In his book, Fires, Firemen and Other Mishaps, A Short History of Coggeshall Fire Brigade, Trevor Deasley writes about the World War I bomb incident. He says, Churchill had promised that any hostile aircraft would be promptly attacked in superior force by a swarm of formidable hornets. Unfortunately, like hornets, our aircraft did not come out at night. They could only take off in the dark with luck, and landing was seldom successful. As a result, when a German raider flew over Coggeshall on a February night in 1915, he could operate with some degree of leisure. This happened on the 21st of February, 1915. In World War II, I've mentioned before on this channel that our church was bombed. 
An incident report indicates that on the 16th of September 1940, the bomb fell. A witness who was looking out at night, Dennis Wood, said, it screamed as it came down, a terrible row right overhead. Then I saw it hit with a flash and a ball of flame. I thought all the trees were on fire, but there was no sign of that the next day. The second bomb that fell at the same time as the one that hit the church actually fell where a beard terrace is. On the footpath that Henry Nunn saved. This bomb didn't go off until the next day. And something else happened the next day. When the bomb hit the tower at night, it didn't actually hit the tower, it hit beside the tower the north side and it's the report indicates that it went in at an angle and the explosion damaged a lot of the north side of the church according to Trevor's book the vicar Norman Brown wrote this account on the 16th of September 1940, Coggeshall suffered a major loss. London was the chief target and its defence was the first consideration. This allowed lone bombers to cross our shores with comparative impunity. And it was such a lone raider that was heard circling Coggeshall. It was the night of Monday the 16th of September 1940 shortly before a quarter past nine in the evening when two bombs were heard to fall one fell in Butfield and exploded the following afternoon no one was hurt and there was no obvious damage the other fell in the churchyard close to the northwest corner of the church penetrating at an angle so that it must have been directly below the tower before detonating. Later rods were put down the hole made by the falling bomb. They were 25 feet long and even failed to reach the bottom. The depth at which it exploded probably accounted for the noise which was heard more clearly at a distance than near at hand. In the church, the walls were pushed out by the blast, so the roof was unsupported and came crashing down. The roof of the nave dragged down the north arcading, and so the roof of the north aisle. Further east, Although the walls were strained outwards, the roof maintained sufficient force to hold. On the day following the bombing, the turret stairway collapsed and the masonry fell on, onto and smashed the roof of the western bay of the South Isle. During the following week, the southwest corner of the tower collapsed. Local history is a wonderful thing because you discover things that you weren't shown in school, you weren't taught in school. I mean every area of the country ha is full of rich with stories of the past. Each and every individual is just as important as the the nobility and the, and the celebrity. To me, 
stories that I think need to be told and in, in a lot of cases are far more important than for what they represent. Anyway, that's all from me. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and as always, and if you wouldn't mind giving it a thumbs up and I'll see you in another video now I'm armed with a book that's given me amazing ideas stay safe